morning and welcome to Palm Field in St. Anthony Village, Minnesota. Steve Lindsmeyer with you as we get set for the Class A Amateur Baseball State Tournament. The quarterfinal action beginning today here at Palm Field. Four games over the next, well, 12-ish hours. We'll have them for you here on Prep Spotlight. TV and uh, thanks for joining us. Our first game features the powerhouse from Minnetonka, the Minnetonka Millers taking on Air Freight. They will throw the first pitch here in just a few moments as we close in on our first pitch here tonight. Let's take a look uh, first at how we got here to this point and uh, here's a recap of uh, round one. To the order. This one into left field. Kranstad looks up. Walk off in the bottom of the 15th. Kyle Hill. hit in the air to right field. It's down for a hit. Jordan Amos around second, around third is a throw to the plate, and he is in there. Fair down the third baseline. Coming in to score is Hoffman. Poppets will be waved around. He'll score. And a long way to left field. Wallard. Going back on it, and it is gone. Solo. This one launched into deep right field. David Rowther takes a look. See you later. One pitch here. This one smashed down the line fair. Runner around third. Headed for home. Hill score standing up. Two on the way. Third ball hit high in the air. Short, short, locked in, out, drops it! Drops it! The winning run scores the St. Paul Capitals. So that's a recap of the eight games that got us here to the quarterfinals, and we've got four games for you today here from Palm Field in St. Anthony. Taking a look at our schedule, getting underway here at 10 a.m. It's Air Freight against the Minnetonka Millers. One o'clock, it's Baseball 365 taking on the Metro Knights. 4 o'clock, the host of the tournament, the St. Anthony Hogs, will take on the Highland Park Beavers. And then at 7 o'clock, our nightcap features Stockman's Irish against the St. Paul Capitals. So those four games coming your way here this evening on Prep Spotlight start, TV. Let's introduce the starting lineups of both teams. Starting we will uh, go through the starting lineup here for you, the Minnetonka Millers. Will be the home team on the, or excuse me, the visitors on the scoreboard. Blaine Rutledge will lead off and play center field. Batting second is the third baseman, Joe Abalera. In the three spot is the left fielder, Mike Davis. Joe Schallenberger will be the shortstop and bat fourth. Jack Hansen bats fifth at third base. Paul Volker, the second baseman, bats sixth. Nick Timpson, the right fielder, bats eighth. The DH, Kyle Hoffman in the eighth spot. And doing the catching today is Ben Stoller. So it's Rutledge, Avalera, Davis, Schallenberger, Hansen, Volker, Timpson, Hoffman, and Stoller for the Minnetonka Millers and Don Erdahl will be the pitcher the today for one, Minnetonka wearing Stola. their black jerseys. And Air Freight will Erdahl. start this way today. Jack Cook will lead off and be the shortstop for Air Freight. Batting second is the second baseman Chandler Schaffbauer. Batting third is the the second base, or excuse me, the uh, catcher Nate Pierce. Batting fourth is the first baseman Tony Cutting or Cummings. Batting fifth is the third baseman Kyle Halverson. Batting sixth is the right fielder Tom Kohler. In left field, Tavari Simmons. The center fielder is Don or Dan Scallion, and the DH is Ben Myers. So it's Cook. Schaffbauer, Pierce, Cummings, Halverson, Kohler, Simmons, Scanlon, and Meyer for Air Freight. And doing the pitching today is Graham Lobshear. So those are your starting lineups tonight as the Minnetonka Millers will hit first here in the top half of the first. All games are nine innings, and as we saw last week, we had, what, two of them go beyond the 13th inning. So certainly we could be in for a couple of long ones today as these teams, once you get to the quarterfinals, very evenly matched. So we will 
Get the national anthem here at Palm Field. First pitch coming up between Minnetonka and Air Freight. All right, we are ready for first pitch. Once the boys in red finish their warm-up tosses, it is Graham Lobshear on the mound for Air Freight today. The St. Thomas University pitcher. Pitched 14 innings for the Tommies in 2021, the abbreviated uh, 2021 season. Struck out nine hitters over those 14 innings this year. Bob Shear, a lefty from Stillwater, Minnesota. He was, I believe, an All-American in 2019. The defense behind Graham Lobshear today will feature... Cummings at first, Shape Bauer at second, Cook is the shortstop, Halverson's at third, the outfield left to right, Simmons, Scallion, and Kohler, and doing the catching today for Air Freight is Nate Pierce. Due up here in the top half of the first for the Millers will be the center fielder Blaine Rutledge, the third baseman Joe Avalara, and the left fielder Mike Davis. So Rutledge, Avalara, and Davis do up here in the visitors half of the first. And we are just at 10 o'clock right now, so maybe starting just a few minutes after 10. And here's Pierce's throw down to second. And we will get this thing started. Center fielder number 15, Blaine Rutledge. So Blaine Rutledge digs in to do the hitting for Minnetonka here in the top half of the first. It is a lefty on lefty showdown to start things off. Graham Lobsch here against Blaine Rutledge to start this game today and our first pitch time is at 10 o'clock so right on the nose and Rutledge takes the first pitch at the knees for a called strike and he's behind 0-1. Here's the second pitch from Lobsch here just off the plate missed a little wide 1-1. One First pitch temperature today, 66 degrees. Wind blowing out towards center field today. And a swing and a miss. And a, actually a foul tip into the glove of Pierce. And Rutledge behind, one ball and two strikes. 13 mile an hour west wind today, blowing straight to center field. And a swing and a miss on the slider down in the dirt. And Rutledge is the first victim of Graham Lobshear here in the top half Rotation of the first inning. Number 40, Joe. Avalara. And that'll bring up the third baseman, Joe Avalara. And a first pitch called strike to Avalara. Graham Lobshear working quickly here in the top half of the first. Pretty much gets the ball, stands on the rubber, and delivers. Here's the 0 1, and he missed out away. 1 and 1. One ball, one strike to the righty. 
And Lopshear with the curveball over for a strike, one and two. So one ball, two strikes. One away here in the first, and there's a ground ball to the right side. Schaefbauer on a couple of hops, throws on to first, and that is out number two, four, three, the scoring play for the second out. And two quick ones to start the ball game as Rutledge and Avalara go quickly. And now Mike Davis will hit for Minnetonka. And a first pitch swing and a foul tip into Pierce's glove, nothing in one. No balls, one strike, and Lobshear right back to work. And he missed inside with a slider, one and one. That slider had a little bit of early movement from Lobshear. Here's the one, one coming. And there's a breaking ball over for strike two. One ball, two strikes, and he's ahead of Davis. The one, two, low ball two. Two balls, two strikes. That one just missed low. And the 2-2. Two -two. Fly ball into center field. Sliding over towards the gap is Scanlon. Now back a couple of steps, and it drops in over his head as that one kept carrying into the wind. And that wind is straightaway center field, causing problems for Scanlon in the first inning. And that'll go down as an air charge to the center fielder, Scanlon. And Davis will reach Joe second with two down. So the first one into play in the outfield, and the wind plays a factor. We'll see how many times we see that today. And now a lob shear from the stretch for the first time, and there's a foul back to the screen, nothing in one. No balls, one strike. Yeah, that center field flag is whipping straight to the parking lot. And that's down, one and one, missed with a breaking pitch. One ball, one strike. Joe Schallenberger, the hitter for Minnetonka. And a ground ball to third on two hops. Knocked down by Halverson. He's going to have to hurry now and in time to get Schallenberg for the out. 5-3, the scoring play to end the first. No runs, no hits. There was an error and one left for Minnetonka in the visitors' half of the first. We played a half inning. It's... Minnetonka nothing, Air Freight Unlimited coming to bat here from the Class A State Amateur Tournament. Nobody does high school sports like PrepSpotlight.tv. Your home for Minnesota State Tournament action is also where you can find the best weekly action during the regular season in 2021. We make it easy to be a high school sports fan at PrepSpotlight.tv. Celebrate the end of the 2021 town ball season. Join your teammates, rivals, and ball fans from around the state at the Twins game on September 11th. Special ticket pricing for town ball players and fans. Salutes to the newly crowned champs and a very fun night at the ballpark. Order your tickets at twinsbaseball.com slash townball and wear your town's team colors to Target Field on September 11th. Right-hander Don Erdahl will start today for the Minnetonka Millers as we go to the bottom half of the first here in game one of our quadruple header here on PrepSpotlight.tv from the Class A State Amateur Baseball Tournament. It is winner go home. Winners on to the semifinals tomorrow. The winner of this game will play at noon tomorrow. And they will play the winner of our second game. Second game today features Baseball 365 and the Metro Knights. 
The defense behind between Don Erdahl. And leading off for Air Freight Unlimited, the shortstop number 12, Jack Cook. Jack Cook will lead off and the shortstop. We'll get to the defense in just a moment here. Shortstop Cook will be followed by Chandler Schaefbauer, the second baseman, and Nate Pierce, the catcher. One, two, and three for Air Freight. And that first pitch from Erdahl, the dirt. And it's behind 1-0. and oh. One ball, no strikes. And Erdahl delivers and a swing and a miss. 1-1. One and one. Minnetonka Millers have a slew of Class A state championships over the years. The one and one, a tapper back to the mound. Erdahl off and a bare hand pick and in plenty of time will throw out Cook for the opening out of the top or the bottom of the first. Be a 1-3 scoring play for out number one. And now Chandler Schaefbauer will hit against Erdahl. And here's the first pitch and a line drive into the gap in left center field. And that is going to get down for a hit. And will it be extra bases? Schaefauer takes the turnaround first and he will glide into second with a one out double. So Schaefauer wasted no time taking the first pitch he saw from Erdahl into the left center field gap. Catcher down number 60, Nate Pierce. So one on and one out to Nate Pierce, the left-handed hitting catcher for Air Freight will step in to face Erdahl who has got some traffic now on the bases. The first pitch swinging a pop-up into right field. Timpson in a couple of steps now starts to drift back and setting up for a tag is Schaefauer but he will not go. And that'll be an F9 for out number two. It'll be up to Tommy Cummings to try to drive in Schaefauer after that one, off, one out double. One on, two outs. Just four pitches so far, or five pitches so far for Erdahl here in the bottom half of the first, and he misses low with ball one. One ball, no strikes. Here's the 1-0, and that's down and away, ball two. First two pitches, any indication, it looks like he is gonna be just happy about if putting Cummings on if he has to. Not giving him to him here with a couple of breaking balls in the dirt. Here's the 2-0 and there's a huge shot foul. Two and one. So that was a little bit more over the plate so we'll see if he comes back after him here with the potential go ahead run and the ice breaking run standing on second base. Here's the 2-1, and it's over at the belt for a strike two and two, so he is going after him now. Shows what I know. Two balls, two strikes. Erdahl looks, shape power at second, nobody holding him. And this is shot into right field. That's gonna be down for a hit in front of Timpson. And shape power rounding third. He's gonna score standing up. And it's a two-out run scoring hit delivered by Tommy Cummings on a little flare into right field. And it's 1-0 in favor of Air Freight here in the bottom half of the first. Third baseman now number 15, Kyle Halverson. Kyle Halverson, the third baseman, will bat now for Air Freight. And first pitch from Erdahl misses away, ball one. He has fallen behind 
four of the first five, well, I guess three of the first five hitters he's faced. The other two both put the ball in play on their first pitch they saw. But he falls behind Halverson 1-0 with Cummings at first. And there's a strike on a pitch that shaved the outside corner 1-1. One one. one ball, one strike. One run in so far for Air Freight here in the bottom half of the first. One and two now to Halverson. And the one, two. And that's low. Two and two. Maybe a tad outside as well. Two balls and two strikes. Runner goes, 2-2, two -two, lined back up the middle, but caught behind second by the shortstop, Schallenberger. And they're going to say he dropped it. I looked away. But they're going to say that came out of the glove of Schallenberger, so it's going to be an air charge to the shortstop. And now we've got runners at first and second, and Tom Kohler will hit. That was a sinking line drive that I think kind of maybe crossed up Schallenberger at short. And the first pitch is low ball one from Erdahl. Air Freight defeated the Minneapolis Angels 2-0. That game went into extra innings last weekend. It was, I think, another 13 or 14 inning affair. And there's a tapper to third. To his left and falling down is Abalera, and he's going to get nobody. So Abalera stumbled as he made that play. Moving to his left. And that'll be an infield single for Kohler. And now... Left fielder now, number 31, Tavier Simmons. Tavier Simmons will hit. Tavier Simmons... Will bat with the bags full and two outs. Simmons, the left fielder for Air Freight. They've already got one run in the inning. And that's in the dirt and low ball one. One run on three hits in the inning. One air charge to Minnetonka so far. Here's the 1-0. And that's fouled back to the screen, one and one. One ball, one strike. Heard all slowing down a little bit out there on the mound. Taking his time, trying to work through this traffic. Here's the 1-1 one, one, and a check swing and a ball high, 2-1. and one. So it's two balls and a strike. all sets and deals and it's hopping in ball three so now he's one bad one away from walking in a run here in the bottom half of the first three one for it and it's over for a strike fills the count three and two so the runners will go with the pitch here home from Erdahl. So they'll be off with the pitch, 3-2, two, two outs. Soon as Erdahl goes home, they will advance. Here's the 3-2, and it's grounded to the Minnetonka dugout off the foot of Simmons. And he's going to have to walk this one off as that one caught his front foot. Catcher Stoller will walk out to Erdahl to give Simmons some time to 
Walk this one off, and the home plate umpire brushing off home plate to do the same. So three balls, two strikes. Counts full, runners go, and the pitch is low, ball four. So that'll force in Cummings from third, and the bases remain loaded now for Scanlon. And it is going to be 2-0 in favor of Air Freight. Center fielder now, number 14, Dan Scala. So the bag's full, the lefty Dan Scanlon will hit. And the first pitch misses wide. Oh, it's strike one called. That pitch certainly missed off the plate. But it's a called strike to Scanlon, nothing in one. Ready, Erdahl sets and deals. The bag's full, and this one well into the right-handed batter's box, and that'll even the count at one and one. And the one-one is just above the belt for a strike, one and two. So one ball, two strikes. Heard all sets, and the one-two coming to Scanlon. And it's low, ball two. Two balls, two strikes. All right, he sets, here's the two-two. And a ground ball back up the middle. That's going to bleed into center field and should score two. One run is in, and coming in from second is Kohler. And it's 4 nothing Freight here in the bottom half of the first. As another single, the fourth hit of the inning. This one from Dan Scanlon. And he'll get credited for two RBIs, and it's... 4-0. And the first pitch back to the mound on a hop. And Scanlon throws a lollipop to first. And that will end the inning. But not before Freight strikes for four runs on four hits. There was one error and two left aboard for Freight in the first inning. And after one, our score, Air Freight Unlimited, four. And the Minnetonka Millers, nothing. You're watching the... Class A Amateur Baseball Tournament here on PrepSpotlight.tv. So a big inning for Air Freight. They lead 4-0 after one. It'll be Jack Hansen, Paul Volker, and Nick Timpson to face left-hander Graham Lobshear here in the top half of the second inning. And a first pitch over for a strike, nothing in one. So 
So Lobshear works ahead. Here's the 0-1, and that's at the knees. A called strike, nothing in two. So no balls, two strikes. And Lobshear delivers at a check swing on a pitch up and away, but it's ruled no swing by the first base umpire. I think that was the right call there. Didn't look like Hansen committed to that one. And he's behind one and two. Here it is. And there's a ground ball back of the mound underneath Lobshear's glove. Vacuumed up by Cook. It's short and throws out Hansen for out number one. 6-3 the scoring play for the opening out. And now Paul Volker will hit. Second baseman now number 12, Paul Volker. Lefty on lefty. And Lobshear pumps the middle with a strike, nothing and one. And that's fouled away. That's going to get up over the Minnetonka dugout and out of play. Third baseman Halverson over for a look, but that one's going to drift well out of play. So no balls, two strikes. And Lobshear way ahead of Volker here in the top of the second with one out. And the 0-2 pitch and a foul away again. This one up over the batting cages down the third base side. So nothing in two and Lobshear way ahead and he's had Volker behind on a couple. Imagine he stays with the fastball. Here's the 0-2 and a fastball up at the letters, one and two. Here comes the slider. Here's the one two from Lobshear, and that one broke onto the outside half, but out, he says, and it's two and two. He's got that slider with a really early break out of his hand. Here's the two two. And that's a tapper to the right side. Shape Bauer picks it up on three hops, throws on to first, and there's the out. Four three, the scoring play for out number two. And a couple of ground balls for Lobshear here in the top of the second, and he's got the first two men down. Now and now batting will be the right fielder, Timson. Nick Timpson. So Timpson will bat righty into the box, and a fastball on the outer half for a called strike, nothing in one. If Lobshear is getting that pitch, it's going to be a long day for Minnetonka. Here's the 0-1. Yeah, that's fouled away over the press box and actually off the screen and back into play. So it's nothing in two. And Lobshear is one pitch away from a very quick second inning. Lefty sets and deals. Here's the 0-2 and a breaking pitch over for strike three. It froze Timpson looking. And a 1-2-3 second for Lobshear and his team leads 4-0 after an inning and a half. It's Air Freight Unlimited leading the Minnetonka Millers here in the Class A Amateur Baseball Tournament. All summer long, you have gathered with friends, neighbors, and family at ball yards all across Minnesota. Still going, still going, gone, a home run. Diamonds that decorate and help define hundreds of communities. Town Ball binds together our passion for baseball in our hometowns. And on September 11th, the cornerstone of Minnesota baseball, Target Field, will host a party for all those who play, watch, and support Town Ball. The Twins host the Royals at 6.10 p.m. Prior to the game, the newly crowned state amateur champs will be honored at the Town Ball Tavern and during a pregame ceremony. Wear your team colors and enjoy a special night at Target Field. The 0-2 pitch, strike three, Fairmont, and the state champions in 2020. For tickets to the Twins, tip of the cap to Town Ball on September 11th, Visit twinsbaseball.com slash townball. Town Ball Tour, head to the small towns and tell people what it's all about. A lot of excitement. Weather is fantastic. This place has been here since the early 80s. 
This is a baseball town. The town is here. The kids are here. It's safe. It's a wonderful environment. We certainly met some wonderful characters. Thanks for joining us for another season of Fox 9's Town Ball Tour. Nobody does high school sports like PrepSpotlight.tv. Your home for Minnesota State tournament action is also where you can find the best weekly action during the regular season in 2021. We make it easy to be a high school sports fan at PrepSpotlight.tv. Celebrate the end of the 2021 town ball season. Join your teammates, rivals, and ball fans from around the state at the Twins game on September 11th. Special ticket pricing for town ball players and fans salutes to the newly crowned champs and a very fun night at the ballpark. Order your tickets at twinsbaseball.com slash townball and wear your town's Back here at Palm Field at St. Anthony, Steve Linsmeyer with you here on PrepSpotlight.tv. Having a bit of a technical issue right now, but we are in the uh, top half of the second. We're back and running, it looks like. We're going to have a pitching change after just two pitches here in the top of the second. They are going to take Erdahl off the mound after Jack Cook let off the inning with a single. They are going to go to their bullpen already. And coming in for Minnetonka will be number 41, Ben Hughes. So Erdahl faces just 10 batters. He goes an inning plus, five hits. He is responsible for the runner at first as of yet. One walk, no strikeout. So we'll get the numbers on Erdahl when we can close the book on him. But our next pitcher in this game is big right-hander Ben Hughes for Minnetonka as he tosses warm-up pitches. And I think so far just two of the four runs against Erdahl will be earned thanks to that error on the shortstop Schallenberger that if you go back and rebuild the inning I believe all of those runners or two of those runners should have been taken off the bases with that inning being over had Schallenberger made the catch. And for air freight, second baseman number 56. Actually, maybe three of the four runs might be unearned. Yeah, because Cummings would not have scored. So, yeah, just one earned so far against Erdahl thanks to the error. And they trail 4 nothing. Here's the first pitch to Schaefbauer. He rolls this one to second, and all Volker's going to get is the out at first. So Cook will advance. It's 4-3, the scoring play for out number one to get Chandler Schaefbauer out. And Cook goes to second with one away. Catcher now number 60, Nate Pierce. Nate Pierce will bat now for air freight. And a runner at second with one away. Pierce 0 for 1 today, takes the first pitch just high, 1-0. One ball, no strikes. Hughes looks at second, nobody holding on Cook, and that pitch is in the dirt. A start of a swing there by Pierce, but can't even really call it a check swing. It's 2-0. Hughes sets and the 2-0 pitch and a line drive in a right center field. That is down for a hit and scoring easily for, from second will be Cook. And another single for Air Freight and an RBI for Nate Pierce. Already hit number six in the ball game for Air Freight. And now Tommy Cummings will hit and it's a 5-0 advantage. For Air Freight Unlimited. And first pitch over for a strike on a breaking ball, 0-1. Tommy Cummings will hit. He's one for one. Drove in 
Schaefbauer with two outs back in the first inning, and that eventually opened the floodgates. That's the breaking ball outside, one and one. One ball, one strike. The big righty delivers, and a flip back to the screen, one and two. One ball, two strikes. Short lead at first from Pierce. And the one, two. Ground ball through the hole on the left side. And that'll be a, another single. Third hit of the inning for Air Freight as Cummings has his second hit of the ball game. Pierce moves up 90 feet. He'll be at second. And now Kyle Halverson with that little flare to shortstop back in the first inning. And somehow Schallenberger did not come up with it. They kind of crossed him up, maybe caught him in the heel of the glove. But Air Freight got three runs after that miscue. So first and second, one out. And not much of a pause there from Hughes, but the first pitch is over for a strike, nothing and one. Hughes peering into this catcher, Stoller. Coming, he came into the ball game for Erdahl, who lasted just over an inning. Threw two pitches here in this second inning and was taken off for the reliever, Hughes. One and one as that pitch misses down and away. Looks at second, but nobody holding him on. That pitch is in the dirt, two and one. So two balls and a strike. Alverson came around to score after the air. It was a two one, and he shoots that one down the line, but that's going to drift foul, it just beyond the bullpen mound down the right field line. So now it's two and two. Tom Kohler in the on-deck circle for Air Freight. Seven hits, six singles, and a double for Air Freight to this point. Here's the 2-2 from Hughes, and a breaking ball misses up and in, 3-2. and two. So the count runs full, three balls and two strikes. Three-two pitch, and a tapper foul, just enough of it to stay alive. Yeah, I think he almost hit that right out of Stoller's glove. Not even sure how he got a piece of that one to stay alive. So the count's full, three and two. Hughes looks at second and deals. And a line drive to short this time. Schallenberger holds on and he goes to second for the out. So it'll be a line drive double play, unassisted double play to end the inning. One run, three hits, no errors, and one left for Air Freight in the second. We played two. Our score, Air Freight five, Minnetonka nothing. You're watching the Class A Amateur Baseball Tournament here on Prep Spotlight TV. This one. To left field, Kranstad looks up, walk off in the bottom of the 15th. Kyle has hit in the air to right field, it's down for a hit. Jordan Amos around second, around third is the throw to the plate, and he is in there. 
here down the third baseline. Coming to the score is Hoffman. Poppets will be waved around. He'll score. And a long way to left field. Wallert going back on it, and it is gone. Solo. This one launched into deep right field. David Robbins takes a look. See you later. One pitch here. This one smashed down the line fair. Runner around third. Headed for home. Hill scores standing up. Two on the way. The ball hit high in the air. Short, short. Locked in. Out. Drops it. Drops it. The winning run scores the St. Paul Capitals. On to inning number three. It's 5 0 Air Freight. Over the Minnetonka Millers here in the quarterfinals of the Class A Amateur Baseball Tournament. First of four today from Palm Field. Coming up in our second game today, it'll feature baseball 365 against the Metro Knights. And the host of the tournament, the St. Anthony Hogs, will take on the Highland Park Beavers. And the nightcap, the Stockman's Irish against the St. Paul Capitals. Four Minnetonka, it'll be Hoffman, Stoller, and Rutledge, 8, 9, and 1 to face Graham Lobshear, who misses with his opening offering of the third inning. Here's the 1 0, and he frees him with a fastball, 1 at 1. Hoffman, the designated hitter for the Millers. 1 1 pitch, and he misses with a breaking ball inside, 2 and 1. Two one pitch is flared foul down the first base side and into the trees. Two balls, two strikes. And the lefty kicks and fires and a breaking ball. Hop back to the mound. And Lobshire will take it about 75% of the way. An underhand flip to first for the outs. One three, the scoring play for out number one. And now Ben Stoller will hit. Catcher now number one, Ben Stoller. Stoller, the number nine hitter in the Miller's order. And a check swing, but he went around. Nothing in one. No balls and a strike. Lobshear delivers, and he swings through a fastball in the outer half, 0-2. No balls, two strikes, and Lobshear strikes out Stoller for out number two. Third strikeout for Graham Lobshear. That's the second out of the inning. And Blaine Rutledge will hit, and we can actually close the book on Don Erdahl, the starter today for Minnetonka. One plus inning for Erdahl, five hits, five runs, two were earned, no strikeouts and a walk. Final numbers for Erdahl today. And a first pitch over for a strike from Lobshear, and he works ahead of Rutledge, nothing and one. Lefty on lefty matchup, and a breaking ball outside, one and one. One ball, one strike. Lobshear works quickly, no one one coming. And a tapper to the right side on two hops for the first baseman Cummings. He'll take it to the base himself, three unassisted. And Graham Lobshear in cruise control through three innings. His team up 5 nothing here in the quarterfinals of the Class A Amateur Baseball Tournament on PrepSpotlight.tv. Town ball tour. Head to the small towns and tell people what it's all about. A lot of excitement. Weather is fantastic. This place has been here since the early 80s. This is a baseball town. The town is here. The kids are here. It's safe. It's a wonderful environment. We certainly met some wonderful characters. Thanks for joining us for another season of Fox 9's Town Ball Tour. Nobody does high school sports like PrepSpotlight.tv. Your home for Minnesota State tournament action is also where you can find the best weekly action during the regular season in 2021. 
We make it easy to be a high school sports fan at PrepSpotlight.tv. Ben Hughes chucking his warm-up tosses here in the bottom of the third inning. As he gets ready to face 6, 7, and 8 for Air Freight, Kohler, Simmons, and Scanlon. In the home half of the third, 5 nothing in favor of Air Freight. They got four runs in the first, one in the second. And Hughes will try to put up a zero here in the third to give his team a little bit of a chance here. But right now, they're going to need to do a lot more than they are against Graham Lobshear to this point. At this point, five runs looks like it's going to be more than enough the way Lobshear is carving up the Miller's lineup through the first ten hitters. But obviously... We know baseball, there's a long way to go, but certainly something's going to have to change for Minnetonka. And a first pitch strike to Kohler. Kohler one for one. He singled back in the first inning. That was against Erdahl. Steal one from Hughes. And a ground ball back up the mound and skips into center field for a leadoff single. Hughes tried to kick that ball in the air, but just missed his cleat. And it skipped off the dirt behind him and just about hit the bag at second as well and into center field. Xavier Simmons will bat now for air freight with nobody out and a runner on first. Swing and a miss, nothing in one. Simmons walked with the bases loaded so he got credited for an RBI, and Erdahl walked him on a 3-2 pitch in that first inning. And that shot foul right behind the first base coach for Air Freight. And Hughes ahead, nothing in two. Hughes has gotten ahead of a couple hitters so far today. We have not seen the put-away pitch yet. Here's the 0-2, and oh man, that did not miss by much. That looked like it was strike three, and Hughes is asking where that one was. One and two, and a curveball misses inside, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Leadoff man's at first. Nobody out. 2 2 pitch. And a check swing. Well, I really can't even call it a check swing. A start of a swing from Simmons, but the ball misses down and away. And the count runs full 3 and 2. Simmons fought off a very good two strike pitch in his last at bat with a foul ball. This time, not so lucky as he swings through a fastball to end the at bat. And he is retired with one out now in the third, and Dan Scanlon will hit. First strikeout of the ball game for Hughes. Scanlon had the two-run single in that first inning that really opened things up here for Air Freight. There was a 2-0 game at that point. Two-run single to... Double the lead. Here's the 1 0. And it's fouled behind the grandstand and out of play. A couple of kids sprinting after it. One ball, one strike. Leadoff man still at first with one away. 1 1. And a fastball for a strike, one and two. So he was ahead, one ball and two strikes. Five runs on eight hits, one air for Air Freight, no runs, no hits, an air for Minnetonka. One, two. And a tapper towards short, charging in is Schallenberger. He's going to have to hurry, and he airmails the throw beyond first base and into the screen. 
So Scanlon will reach. I, that's going to go as an infield single. Oh, they're going to charge him an error. I, yeah, they, they changed it to a hit. I was going to say that should be an infield single for Scanlon. It was going to be a tough play as Schallenberger was going to have to hurry. A good throw may have got it. Oh, they, they changed it back to an error again. I don't know. They went error, then they went hit. Now they've gone back to error. I don't know if I can give Schallenberger an error for that one. It was going to need to be an awfully perfect throw to get Scanlon. Kohler moved up to third, by the way, in case I missed that point. He is no longer at second. Here's the 0-1 from Hughes, and that shaves the corner for a strike. Nothing in two. Ah, man, that's a that's a tough error to charge to Schallenberger right there because that ball was a little slow roller in the middle of the infield. He had to charge, and a I mean a perfect throw probably gets him, but you can't you can't give errors on needing perfect throws. It's got to be a routine throw that gets him, and I don't know. I, I'll roll with what the official scorer said and, and go that way, but, man, I, I don't know if I can give Schallenberger an error there. Here's the one-two runner goes, and a roller to first, and on a knee, vacuumed up by Hansen, and he'll go to the base himself. Three unassisted for the out. Scanlon goes to second. There's two away. And back to the top of the order, and Jack Cook. It was Jack Cook's single in the top of the second, just two pitches into the inning that chased Erdahl. So he is one for two. So two men aboard and two outs. Cook is batted now in all three innings and takes the first pitch just below the knee of the ball. That was an awfully good pitch from Hughes. 1 0. One ball, no strikes. And that's down and away. 2 0. Wind starting to pick up a little bit, blowing again straight away in the center field, straight out of the west today. Maybe a little bit now towards the left field corner, but pretty much straight away into center from a little bit of left tint. Here's the 2-0, and that misses away 3-0. So he's behind Cook, three balls and no strikes, and I would say unlikely to give in here with the runner on first, although Chandler Schaefauer does have a double, and he waits in the on-deck circle. Here's the 3-0, and he hits the corner with a strike. Not necessarily a get-me-over strike there, but a strike nonetheless, 3-1. and one. Three balls, one strike. And Hughes delivers, and it's low ball four. So a walk to Cook with two outs will fill the bases for Chandler Schaefauer, who... Ripped a double in the left center field gap in his first at bat. He's one for two. Came around to score in that four run first inning. And the first pitch to Shea Bauer hits the corner of strike. A good pitch right there from Hughes at the knees. Not to be nitpicky here, but that looked awfully a lot, lot like the first pitch he threw to Cook. Base is full. Here's the 0-1 from Hughes and a curveball that never broke. 1-1. One, one. one ball, one strike as it stayed way up in the zone. One one from Hughes, and there's a strike. One and two. Two pretty good pitches there around that errant curveball from Hughes. So one ball, two strikes. Hughes settles in. 
And the one, two to Shea Bauer. And he got him to chase upstairs to end the inning. So he avoids trouble here in the third. No runs, a hit. One air and three left for Air Freight in the third. We played three complete. Our score, Air Freight five, the Minnetonka Millers nothing. You are watching the Class A State Amateur Baseball Tournament here on PrepSpotlight.tv. Celebrate the end of the 2021 town ball season. Join your teammates, rivals, and ball fans from around the state at the Twins game on September 11th. Special ticket pricing for town ball players and fans. Salutes to the newly crowned champs and a very fun night at the ballpark. Order your tickets at twinsbaseball.com slash townball and wear your town's team colors to Target Field on September 11th. The state amateur tournaments are now in full swing. The Class B and C tournaments will be played out over the next three weeks in Waconia, Chaska, and Hamburg. Get out and support your community, or if you just love the game of baseball and want to watch win or go home games at fantastic venues, there's nothing like tournament time. If you can't make it to the games, prepspotlight.tv slash townball has packages that will make watching all the venues very affordable. Enjoy the tournament at the park or right here on prepspotlight.tv. Steve Lindsmeyer with you from Palm Field in St. Anthony. It is day number two, or day number three, I should say, of the Class A Amateur Baseball Tournament. The quarterfinal round, four games today. And Air Freight leads the Minnetonka Millers by a score of four to nothing. And, and uh, Graham Lobshear misses with his first pitch of the fourth. Up and away to Joe Abalera. It's Abalera, Davis, and Schallenberger. And there is the first hit of the ball game for Minnetonka as Abalera flares one into right field. And a leadoff single here in the fourth. See if Minnetonka can get something going against Lobshear, who has been motoring through his first time through the order. Left fielder now, number 20. Face just Mike one Davis. over the minimum. It was an error charged to the center fielder, Scanlon. So runner on first and nobody out. First pitch to Davis. And he started his swing but takes down and, over, down and in for ball one. Davis was the beneficiary of that error in center field on the fly ball to Scanlon. That almost ended the first inning. Fouls that one away, one and one. One ball and no strikes. And Lampshire fires over and missed low and a groan from the air freight faithful. Two and one. Two balls, one strike, and a breaking ball high. Three and one. So the count runs three and one. And Davis way ahead, three one pitch, and Lobshire walked him and we might be on the verge of having ourselves a broadcaster's jinx here. Lampshire looked almost unhittable Joe. through the first time Shout through the order, and now a single and a walk. And Minnetonka's got something brewing for the first time. Top half of the fourth inning. And there's a strike of the knees, and he's ahead of Schallenberger, nothing in one. Schallenberger, the Minnetonka shortstop. The 0-1, grounded to third, and a nice play behind the base. Step on third for one, and then the throw to second is in time, and a great play from Schaefbauer to catch the ball, stay on the base, and then flashed the ball to the umpire. And had Halverson been able to stay on his feet, that may have been a triple play, but Good it'll be away. two as Avalara is out five unassisted for out number one, and then a 5-4 to retire Davis and a fielder's choice 
for Schellenberger. And the first pitch is up and away, ball one. The 1-0, -oh, and that shaves the corner one and one. Runner at first, 1-1 one -one pitch. And it's over for a strike one and two. The one, two, and down and in, runs away from Pierce just a bit, but not moving at first base was Schallenberger. I don't even think he left his heels at first, standing there flat-footed as that one rolled away from Pierce. So two and two, and a line drive back up the middle and into center field. It'll be played on two hops by Scanlon. So a two-out single for Jack Hansen. Second baseman now, number 12, Paul Volker. And Volker. Paul Volker will hit now. Lefty on lefty action here in the top of the fourth with two down. And Lobshear's first pitch misses outside, 1-0. First of four today from Palm Field. Down and away again, 2-0. Two, oh. right, two balls, no strikes. Bob Shear looks at second and hits the corner with a pitch. Two and one. Volker rolled one to second in his only at bat so far against Lobshire. Here's the 2-1, and that's flip foul over the, oh, actually it caught the screen and came back. Two and two. So two balls, two strikes. Lobshire one pitch away from getting out of some trouble here in the four thanks to a double play, and that's outside three and two, so the runners will go. Three balls, two strikes, and the lefty sets and deals. Runner goes, and there's a flare into center. That's going to be caught by Scanlon. It just hung up in the air and kept hanging as Volker hit a line drive out to center, but Scanlon runs it down for the final out of the fourth inning. Off the bat, I thought that was going to get down. It did not, and a scoreless fourth inning for Graham Lobshear. No runs, two hits, no errors, two left for Minnetonka in the visitors half of the fourth. We go to the bottom of the inning. It is four, five nothing, air freight over Minnetonka here in the Class A Amateur Baseball quarterfinals. All summer long, you have gathered with friends, neighbors, and family at ball yards all across Minnesota. Still going, still going, gone, a home run. Diamonds that decorate and help define hundreds of communities. Town ball binds together our passion for baseball in our hometowns. And on September 11th, the cornerstone of Minnesota baseball, Target Field, will host a party for all those who play, watch, and support town ball. The Twins host the Royals at 6.10 p.m. Prior to the game, the newly crowned state amateur champs will be honored at the town ball tavern and during a pregame ceremony. Wear your team colors and enjoy a special night at Target Field. The 0-2 pitch. Strike three, Fairmont, state champion in 2020. For tickets to the Twins' tip of the cap to Town Ball on September 11th, visit twinsbaseball.com slash townball. To the bottom of four here at Palm Field in St. Anthony. Steve Lindsmeyer with you on PrepSpotlight.tv. It'll be Pierce Cummings and Halverson to face the righty Ben Hughes in the home fourth. And the first pitch on the way is high ball one. Pretty nice setting for some town ball baseball this weekend. 
Here's the 1 0. And it's over for a strike 1 and 1. Not sure why the fans had an issue with that one. Looked like a pretty good pitch, but I heard some groans from some of the Air Freight fans. Here's the 1 1. And that's in the air towards second and coming in to make a catch is Volker. And there's out number one. So Volker catches a little flare out to second base and there's one away for Tommy Cummings. Cummings has hits in both plate appearances today. He's two for two. And he was right to work. First pitch to Cummings is down and away, ball one. One ball, no strikes. The 1-0. Oh. oh, caught the corner. One and one. One ball, one strike. They had a fastball up. That almost looked like a breaking ball out of his hand. Maybe that out of his hand, that uh, that pitch looks like a bit of a breaking ball, but it kind of just stays up. Maybe it's not a, a failed breaking ball like I originally said in the last inning, but 1-2 and a cue shot to the air freight dugout and off the fence rolls to the first baseman, Hanson. That'll be a foul ball. So one ball, two strikes. And the one, two coming. And ripped foul. Now the third baseline. So it'll stay one and two. And Hughes, one, two pitch to Cummings. And that's shot to the right side, and that's down the line for a base hit. And Cummings has his third hit of the ball game. So Cummings, three for three, as he continues to find ways to reach base. Wasn't the prettiest of swings, but hey. Sometimes all you got to do is put the bat on it and the ball will find the green. So one away. And they'll check the runner and pretty close play. Uh, Cummings back in time. And there's a belt high fastball, nothing in one. No balls, one strike. Another check of the runner at first. No balls, one strike, and Hughes has thrown over twice. Here's the second pitch of the at-bat, and there's a strike and another snap throw to first. Trying to throw behind the runner. So nothing in two to Halverson, and the Miller is awfully worried about Cummings over there at first. Two throwovers and a throw behind the runner from the catcher so far. Here's the 0-2 pitch. And that's slap foul. Nothing in two. One out here in the bottom of the fourth. Five nothing air freight. Four runs in the first, one in the second. Here's the 0 2. And a chopper to first. And Hansen will take it and go to the base himself, so three unassisted for out number two. Cummings will move up 90 feet. He's now in second. And Tom Kohler, who has 
A couple of hits as well today. The guys named Tom in the air freight order have five hits. Everybody else has five hits. Runner at second and a first pitch over for a strike, nothing and one. Well, Tommy Cummings and Tom Kolar with multiple hits today for air freight. I think they're the only guys with multiple hits. Here's the 0-1. And that just missed off the plate, one and one. One ball, one strike. The 1-1. One, one. And that's in the dirt, skips away. And trying for third and advancing successfully is Cummings. That got away from Stoller. Counts two and one. So now it's two balls and a strike to Tommy Kohler. Here's the two one. And a bouncer to third and just low enough for Avalera to go up and get it. That one almost looked like it was going to head over his head down that left field line off the bounce, but able to reach up and glove it. 5-3, the scoring play to end the threat in the fourth. No runs, a hit, no errors, one left for Air Freight. We played four. Our score, Air Freight 5, Minnetonka Millers, nothing. Class A amateur baseball tournament here on PrepSpotlight.tv. The Town Ball Tour. Head to the small towns and tell people what it's all about. A lot of excitement. The weather is fantastic. This place has been here since the early 80s. This is a baseball town. The town is here. The kids are here. It's safe. It's a wonderful environment. We certainly met some wonderful characters. Thanks for joining us for another season of Fox 9's Town Ball Tour. For the Millers, right fielder number 27, Nick Denson. Four innings in the books. It's 5 nothing. Air Freight. We go to the fifth inning. It'll be Timson, Hoffman, and Stoller to face left-hander Graham Lobshear here at the top of the fifth. And here's the first pitch. Misses up and away. Ball one. Lobshear has gone four innings, two hits, three strikeouts. And there's a swing and a miss on a pitch down, one and one. He has walked just one. One ball, one strike. And that's ripped foul. One and two. A little bit of a jam shot in off the handle of the bat. One ball, two strikes. There's a major temperature shift here at uh, Palm Field, whenever the sun comes out as compared to stays behind the clouds. Swing and a miss on a pitch in the dirt and no tag. So a throw to first will get the out. Strikeout number four for Laufscher. There's one away. Second time he struck out Timpson. Kyle Hoffman will bat now. Hoffman 0 for 1, he grounded back to the mound and is only at bat. And first pitch slaps it foul over the air freight dugout down the first baseline. No balls, one strike. And there's a ground ball back to the mound, but this time it goes underneath the glove of Lobshear and rolls into center field for a one out single. 
So the number eight hitter aboard for Ventanka. And first pitch fouled back to the screen, nothing at one. The Metro Knights and baseball 365 set to play after this. One o'clock first pitch, Lobshire ahead now of Stoller 0-2. We'll have all four for you today, and I'll be here for the marathon. All, I got all four of them this afternoon. Here's the 0-2. And popped up, but Pierce back for a look, but that's just going to reach the press box. Only out of play by seven or eight feet. And it's, again, 0-2. Oh, two pitch and a breaking ball. Oh man, where did that one miss? Pierce asking the home plate umpire where that one missed. And I think he's got a good case because, man, that looked like it caught the corner. Here's the one, two, and that's strike three. This time he will leave no doubt. So two away. Strikeout number five for Graham Lobshire. Back to the top of the order for Minnetonka and Blaine Rutledge will hit. Rutledge 0 for two was a strikeout victim in the first and grounded to first in the third. And, oh man, that's ball one, I guess. A couple of head scratchers here in the fifth inning. Here's the 1 0. That's outside and down. 2 0. Again, and I'm, a, I'm an unbiased third party. I got no rooting interest in these games today. Here's the 2 0. Swing and a miss. 2 and 1. Lobshire trying to work his way back. Here's the 2-1. And that hits the corner 2-2. Two and two. And I don't think Rutledge necessarily agreed with that call. She kind of steps out of the dugout. Didn't make any, you know, anything known that he didn't like it, but just didn't seem like he was too convinced. And that's fouled back. Kind of strode out of the batter's box a little purpose that time. Two balls, two strikes. 2-2 two -two from Lobshear, and popped up. Left side of the infield. Circling around it is Cook, and he will make the catch for the out. So a pop fly ends the fifth. No runs, a hit, no errors, one left, four and a half complete. We're halfway home in game one of the quarterfinals, and it's 5-0 air freight on to the bottom of the fifth here at Palm Field.
now for Air Freight. Left fielder number 31. Tom Simmons, Scanlon, and Meyer will face righty Ben Hughes here in the home half of the fifth. It's 5 0 Air Freight. First pitch is tapped to the right side. Charging in on it is Volker, and he will throw out Simmons for out number one. So one pitch, one out for Hughes here in the bottom of the fifth, and he'll face now Dan Scanlon. Scanlon officially one for two, and if I was the official scorer, he'd be two for two. Scanlon hit a two-run double, or two-run single, excuse me, in the first inning. The first pitch in on the handles fouled away. No balls, one strike. Oh and one. That's low, one and one. DH Ben Meyer in the on deck circle. Here's the one one. It's fouled away up over the batting cages down the third base side. One ball, two strikes. And Hughes rocks and fires. And a curve ball slammed into right field. Drifting back is Rutledge, still going back and makes a leaping catch in towards the fence. And that'll be out number two. And that... Uh, Wind blowing, I'd say now kind of left center field-ish. Maybe even more towards the left field corner, but uh, that ball drifting out to center and carrying a bit. So Scanlon's retired. And now Ben Meyer will bat. Meyer 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs. Takes inside ball 1. One and oh. And there's a fastball over for a strike, one and one. Winner of this game plays at noon tomorrow. Steve Thompson will be back for all three tomorrow. The two semifinals followed by the six o'clock championship. He was missed away. Two balls, one strike. Two and one, swing and a miss, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Air Freight has had a base runner in every inning so far. That's fouled away. Pitch running in on his hands. He got the bottom of the barrel on it and rolled it back to the screen. Two balls and two strikes. Minnetonka has not had a 1-2-3 defensive inning so far today. Hoping for that here. Here's the 2-2. And a fastball that sails away. 3-2. and two. And Hughes delivers the payoff. And oh, missed off the plate for ball four. Tough pitch to take right there. Shortstop now number 12, Jack Cook. But it will lead to ball four, and now back to the top of the order. And batting is the shortstop, Jack Cook. And he takes the fastball just above the belt. For strike one. No balls, one strike. Here's the 0-1, and a curveball high, one and one. One ball, one strike. You know, I'm saying curveball, but I, I don't know if he's just, it looks out of his hand like it's a curveball, but it kind of stays high, and it's, that's a fastball, two and one. Yeah, that last one might have been a curveball, but he does kind of have a, 
maybe like a, some two seam movement early out of his hand that the uh, fastball that kind of looks like makes it uh, look like it's a curveball that just didn't curve. Here's the two one. And that's on the outside corner called strike two and two. Two balls and two strikes. Runner at first with two away. Two, two, and two across the scoreboard. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Lifted in the air, right field line, and the wind's going to keep pushing that one back in play, and it's going to clip the fence. And Timson crashes into the fence trying to get it, but that one right away off the bat looked like it was going to be out of play for sure. But the wind just kind of kept pushing it back into play, and it did pretty much hit right on the fence had it held up just a little bit longer, Timson probably would have been able to get over there to make the play. But he looked to be all right as he kind of, I didn't, shouldn't really say crash into the fence, kind of, you know, fell and rolled into the fence to make sure he didn't crash in. And there's ball three. So that runs the count full three and two. Payoff pitch coming, here it is to Cook. And Cook rips this one left center field, hit well. Rutledge over to the gap and makes the running catch to end the inning. Great play from Rutledge to end the fifth. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. Five in the books. And Air Freight in control. They lead five nothing here in the quarterfinals. What's special about high school sports? The passion. The excitement. The memories. Down on three at the buzzer. Go! Oh. It's good! Two boys win it for the Rebels. It's about impacting your community. Connecting your business to this audience. This is where your customers live, where they shop. This is their circle of life. This is where your business should be. Connect with your best potential customers. This is your invitation. Get in the game. Two, three, and four do up for Minnetonka here in the top of the sixth. Abalera Davis and Schallenberg to face Graham Lobshear here in the visitors' half of the sixth inning. Air Freight leading 5 0, and Minnetonka looking for some sort of offense to get rolling here against Lobshear. They have gotten three hits in the last two innings against him, but still don't have a run. Across the board, as Lobshear fouls behind Avalara, two balls and no strikes. Here's the 2-0, and that's low ball three. So now it's three balls and no strikes. And Lobshear going to have to try to work his way back, and there's a get me over strike three and one. I don't know what Avalara was doing there. That was right down Main Street. I've seen some questionable bat tosses and takeoffs to first, but, oh, man. There's a flare into right. This is going to be a tough play. The wind's going to push it back a little bit for Kohler, and he's going to be able to run it down for the out. So there's out number one. Wind pushing that one back into play just a bit. Left fielder down number or I guess pushing it back Davis. into a playable range for Kohler. It was going to be a fair ball regardless. It's just a matter of if... Kohler was going to be able to get there. So one up, one down, and Davis will bat. He is 0 for 1. Reached down an error, and a breaking ball over for a strike. Nothing in one. 
Here's the 0-1 and a curveball outside. Wonder one. One ball, one strike. And a fastball off the corner, two and one. Davis reached on a error. Scallon misplayed that ball in center for a double. Well, went down as an error because Scallon did get his glove on it. Here's the two one. A bouncer to third, backing up for the big hop is Halverson, and a long throw is going to sail wide and hit the fence, but Davis will not advance. And I think that that's almost got to go as an infield single as well because uh, that, that, they'll give him an error on that one. That one Shortstop now number 42, Joe Schallenberg. Good throw, probably has him out. It did take the first baseman Cummings off of the bag a little bit. So we'll put that one down as an error. And a fastball over for a strike. Nothing and one to Schallenberger. Schallenberger 0 for 2. He grounded out to third in the first inning and then reached on that fielder's choice in the fourth that yielded two outs. It was a 5-4 double play. That's something you see every day. Lobshire had 0 and 2, and he sails one up and away. 1 and 2 now. One ball, two strikes. One, two. Again, missed outside. Two and two. So yeah, Schallenberg has hit Schallenberger has hit two ground balls to third. There's a pitch outside. Runner goes. Davis trying to take second, and he is safe. So Davis steals second. Counts full three and two. It was a closer play than I originally thought it was going to be right away. A great throw from Pierce, but I think the right call was made. That Davis did get underneath the tag. Here's the payoff pitch and a foul tip that rolls towards the on-deck circle where Jack Hansen will flip it back into play. The count's full three and two. We'll do it all over again. Seventh pitch of the at-bat. And a fly ball into right field. With one out. Davis took off to third. It's going to be caught by Kohler. Throw to second is not going to be in time as Davis was able to get back. But he thought there was two outs. So he took off. Got all the way to third and had to retouch coming back to second. But the ball hit high enough and far enough First that now, number 47, Jack Davis had plenty of time to get back. And Kohler making the catch for out number two. And first pitch misses up and in to Hanson. Hanson one for two today. Ground out to shortstop in his first at bat and then a single in the fourth. Here's the 1-0. It's up and away. 2-0. Lobshire has lost a little bit of his command here as the game has gone on. Here's the 2-0, and there's a curveball over for a strike 2-1. He's kind of hanging his fastball out in the left-handed batter's box right now. Here's the 2-1. And a curveball high, 3-1. and one. So three balls and a strike. And Lobshire delivers to Hanson, and he missed inside for ball four. The second walk issued by Graham Lobshire today as Hansen will go to first with second two down. Now number 12, Paul, Volker. Paul Volker will hit. He's 0 for 2. He grounded out to second in the second inning and then hit a line drive to center field that was run down by Scallon. And he takes the first pitch over for a strike, nothing and one. Lobshire 
Hampshire looks at second. Here's the 0-1, and it's high. One and one. One ball, one strike. One one pitch hits the outside corner one and two. Rompshire has dealt with some traffic on the bases here as of late, but has been able to work his way out of it. Here's the one two. It's down and away two and two. Two and two, looks at second and deals, and a breaking pitch. Oh man, the air freight infield was headed back to the dugout, and I can't blame them. The umpires had some trouble calling that curveball for a strike on the outer half, or on the inner half to lefty, I guess, and there is strike three. So he leaves no doubt with that one. No runs. No hits, one air and two left. Five and a half completed from Palm Field in St. Anthony. It's five nothing air freight. They're now nine defensive outs away from the semis. This one into left field. Cranstad looks up. Walk off. In the bottom of the 15th. Kyle. Hit in the air to right field, it's down for a hit. Jordan Amos around second, around third is the throw to the plate, and he is in there! Fair down the third baseline. Coming in to score is Hoffman. Poppets will be waved around, he'll score. And a long way to left field. Wallard going back on it, and it is gone. Solo. Launched into deep right field. David Roberts takes a look. See you later. One pitch here. This one smashed down the line fair. Runner around third. Headed for home. Hill score standing up. Two on the Third ball hit high in the air. Short, in. Out. Drops it. Drops it. The winning run scores the St. Paul Capitals. Bottom of the sixth, Shape Bauer, Pierce, and Cummings to face Hughes. And that sails outside. One ball and no strikes. Here's the 1 0. And a swing and a miss. 1 and 1. One ball, one strike. And Hughes delivers the 1-1. One, one. And it's another pitch over for a strike. He hits the corner, 1-2. and two. One ball, two strikes. Five runs on ten hits. For Air Freight, they lead this game. And here's a chopper to the first baseline, but foul. So one ball, two strikes. And the one, two. And a chopper back to the mound. Fielded on a bare hand by Hughes. And he zips a throw over and wide of first. So Schaefer will reach. Air charge to the first baseman, Hughes. The catcher now, number six, Nate Pierce. Nate Pierce will bat now. Pierce one for three, a couple of flyouts. Had an RBI single. And first pitch grounded is short. Schallenberger to second for one, relay to first, not in time. So Schaefer forced out, 6-4 for out number one. And Pierce will reach on a fielder's choice. Schallenberger had to 
Moved to his right, it was a tough play, and then cutting in front of first was Volker. Er, in front of Cummings. second, I should say. Tommy Cummings will bat now. He is a perfect three for three and looking to stay that way here in the bottom of the sixth. And first pitch is over for a strike, nothing and one. Cummings has three singles and an RBI on the ledger today. Here's the 0-1. And a line drive, foul. A little jam shot out front, hit the handle. And he spins it down the third baseline and foul. So it's no balls, two strikes. He was sets and deals. And the 0-2 line drive right side, and that splits. Volker and Hansen for another hit for Cummings. Four hits on the day for Tommy Cummings and runners at first and second now with one away. Third baseman number 15, Kyle Halverson. Kyle Halverson will be the hitter now. Halverson is 0 for 3, reached on an air. Lined out and grounded out in three trips. And first pitch swinging, he knocks it foul. No balls, one strike. Halverson hit that twisting line drive to shortstop that Schallenberger mishandled that led to the three of the four runs in the first inning. That's outside, one and one. One ball, one strike. A few sets and deals and a fastball trims the corner. One and two. One ball and two strikes. Hughes looks at second, nobody holding. And a ball outside, snap throw to first, and in time, they are going to get Cummings off the bases. So that'll be 2-3 for out number two. And Cummings is a race from the bases. So now just a runner on second and two away. Halverson in the box, 2-2 two -two count against him. And Hughes deals, here's the 2-2. Two -two. And a line drive into center field, long run for Rutledge, and he's gonna get there again, another running catch by the center fielder, back-to-back -back innings. He has run down a line drive in the gap to end it. Six complete, it's still five nothing air freight. All summer long, you have gathered with friends, neighbors, and family at ball yards all across Minnesota. Still going, still going, gone, a home run! Diamonds that decorate and help define hundreds of communities. Town Ball binds together our passion for baseball in our hometowns. And on September 11th, the cornerstone of Minnesota baseball, Target Field, will host a party for all those who play, watch, and support Town Ball. The Twins host the Royals at 6.10 p.m. Prior to the game, the newly crowned state amateur champs will be honored at the Town Ball Tavern and during a pregame ceremony. Wear your team colors and enjoy a special night at Target Field. The 0-2 pitch, strike three, Fairmont, state champion in 2020. For tickets to the Twins' tip of the cap to Town Ball on September 11th, Visit twinsbaseball.com slash townball.
Just nine defensive outs separate the, oh, that almost eight as that skips underneath the glove of Cook. And into left field. Lead off single for Timpson. Uh, Lobshear and Air Freight trying to get the final nine outs here. Hitter down number 25, Kyle and Hoffman. send themselves to the semifinals. With the leadoff man's aboard. And that'll bring up Kyle Hoffman, the DH. And first pitch off the end of the bat and flip back to the screen. Nothing in one. Hoffman one for two. He grounded back to the mound and singled in two trips. Here's the 0-1. And that's low. One and one. Game two slated to begin at 1 o'clock today. The Metro Knights in baseball 365. Lopeshear will throw to first, but Timpson back in plenty of time. Lopeshear sets. Here's the 1-1. One, one. It's in the dirt. 2-1. Two, two balls and a strike. One pitch coming from the lefty, and that's off the plate. Three and one. Three balls and a strike. Minnetonka hoping to get the first two men on here in the seventh, but that is on the inside corner. A call and strike, and the count runs full three and two. And Lobshear delivers, and a swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Graham Lobshear. That is number seven, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, that's number seven for Lobshear. Now that'll bring up Ben Stoller. Number nine hitter in the order. Lobshear has had his way with him so far. A pair of strikeouts. Nothing at one. Now they foul back to the screen. Here's the 0 1. And another one back to the screen. Nothing in two now. Top of the order in Blaine Rutledge waiting in the on deck circle for Minnetonka, hoping for a chance here in the seventh. Here's the 0 2. And a ground ball to short. This could be two. Second for one. Relay to first is off of the glove of the first baseman, Cummings. And that will be just one out on the play. 6 4 for out number two. And Stoller will reach out of fielder's choice. Center fielder down number 15, Blaine Rutledge. And that will bring up Blaine Rutledge. Now, Cummings won't get charged with an error because you can't assume two outs on a double play. But had he caught that, that would have been the third out of the inning. And Lomshear misses high, I guess, with a curveball. 1-0. It's the 1-0 pitch on the outside corner. A strike, 1-1. One ball, one strike. And Lobshear delivers and down and away. Two and one. Two and one, swing and a miss. Two and two to Rutledge. Counts even, two and two, here it is, and a pop-up, but that's going to get out of play behind the grandstand. Right, 
Two balls, two strikes. We have not had a run in this game since the bottom of the second. And the 2-2 back to the screen. Pierce back to get it. Runner trying for second, and it is in time. What a throw from Pierce to end the seventh. That'll go 2-4 for out number three. And what a play from Pierce. And the seventh, or the top of the seventh ends with that. Amateur baseball is one of Minnesota's great sporting traditions. The state tournament brings together hundreds of communities in late summer at great ballparks all around the state. Coverage of every game can be found on PrepSpotlight.tv. PrepSpotlight.tv's coverage of today's state tournament game is made possible by the Minnesota Baseball Association. And also with help from the Minnesota Twins. Celebrate Town Ball with the Twins on September 11th. Visit twinsbaseball.com slash townball for details. Now let's get to the ballpark. Nobody does high school sports like PrepSpotlight.tv. Your home for Minnesota State tournament action is also where you can find the best weekly action during the regular season in 2021. We make it easy to be a high school sports fan at PrepSpotlight.tv. Kohler, Simmons, and Scallon to face Hughes here in the home seventh. And first pitch misses for ball one. Six, seven, and eight of the air freight order. Here's the 1-0, -oh, and that's over for a strike, one and one. So the count will go to even. Kohler, two for three today. Couple of hits and a ground ball the third in three trips. And that's a strike that sh hits the knees, I guess. One and two. Had a hard time seeing where that one exactly crossed the plate. The umpire and the catcher were blocking me there. One, two from Hughes. And a breaking pitch missed away. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. And Hughes winds and fires, and a ground ball to short. Backhanded by Schallenberger. And he's not going to have a chance to get Kohler, who beats it out for an infield single. So Simmons will bat now with nobody out. Air Freight holding a 5 0 lead. First pitch to Simmons, and that's right down the middle for a strike. Owen one. And Hughes misses away with the second pitch of the at bat. One ball, one strike. Simmons walked with the bases loaded in the first, struck out and grounded out, so he's 0 for 2 with an RBI. Here's the 1-1, one, one. and it's outside again. Pretty much the same pitch as the one directly preceding it, 2-1. and one.
Hughes sets. Here's the 2-1, and that's over for a strike, 2-2. Two and two. Two two, nobody out. Bottom of the seventh. Runner at first. Two two, and it's high to the screen. And Kohler is going to try for second, and he'll get there standing up. That ball didn't quite get the carom that Pierce got in the top half of the inning. That one hit the screen, and with the lefty hitter, it rolled right back to Pierce, and he was able to throw out the runner with. Nobody impeding him because the ball came off to the right-handed batter's box. Counts full to Simmons, and he walked him ball four. Second time today, Simmons has reached via the walk. And we're going to get a visit from the Minnetonka manager. And maybe that'll be the end for Hughes. Not sure. Doesn't look like they had anybody warming up, so... Hughes likely will stay here to face Scallon. Oh, maybe not. So Volker heads back to the dugout to exchange gloves, I would imagine. So we'll see what the change is here. We'll take a quick break and pitching change. It's 5-0 air freight here in the bottom of the seventh. What's special about high school sports? The passion. The excitement. The memories. Down on three at the buzzer. Go! Oh. It's good! Two boys wins it for the Rebels. It's about impacting your community. Connecting your business to this audience. This is where your customers live. Where they shop. This is their circle of life. This is where your business should be. Connect with your best potential customers. This is your invitation. Get in the game. Paul Volker takes over on the mound for the Minnetonka Millers. That also moves Rutledge to second. And now out in center field for the first time today for Minnetonka will be Andy Anderson. He'll play center field and bat in the seven spot of the Miller order. So the DH is gone for the Millers. So we'll get you the numbers on Hughes on here in the Millers, number 12, just Paul a moment. Volker. And for Air Freight, number 14, Dan Scallon. So Scallon will hit. But Hughes did his job, came in five innings, four hits, did not allow a run. And unfortunately, the offense for Minnetonka has not been able to do their half of it. Here's a bunt and a good one. Third base side. Charging is Volker. Throw to first is in time to get Scanlon by a step. But the runners will move up 90 feet. So it'll go 1-4 as a sacrifice for out number one. And we're going to have a pinch hitter, Evan Colker. Evan Colker will hit. So Colker will hit for the DH Meyer. Runners on second and third, and one out in the inning. And 
Air Freight leading 6-5, and there's a chopper over the head of the third baseman, Avalara. One run scores. Here comes Simmons. The throw to the plate is not going to be in time as Simmons slides in in front of the throw. And it will be a pinch hit, two-run single by Evan Kolker. And it's quickly 7-0 in favor of Air Freight. Top Jordan out for Air Freight, shortstop number 12, Jack Cook. So Air Freight adds to their lead. And back to the top of the order in Jack Cook. With the infield drawn in, that bouncer to third hopped easily over the head of Abelera, but I would I actually think that had Abelera been playing regular depth, I don't think he was going to get that one either way because that thing took a huge hop over the third baseman's head. Would have been interesting to see if he would have been able to make the play at regular depth. He at least maybe would have gotten a glove on it, but yeah, I don't know if he'd have made that play. That would have been awfully tough. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch and a two-hopper to short. Backing up is Schallenberger, and he'll get one out at second, but that's all they'll get. 6-4 for out number two. And Cook reaches on a fielder's choice. With two away now and now Schaffbauer will hit. Six Chandler Schaffbauer. Chandler Schaffbauer is one for four with a double today in four trips, up and in ball one. But a lot of breathing room for Graham Lobshear now as his team has added to their five nothing lead, make it seven nothing, runner goes, pitches down and in, and it's gonna hop out of the glove of Stoller, so that will allow Cook to take second without a throw. So a 2-0 pitch now coming to Schaefbauer. Here's the 2-0, and that's upstairs, 3-0. And I spoke too soon on the no runs charge to Hughes because he will get charged for the two runs here in the seventh. And Volker gets one over for a strike. And that shot foul the other way. Final numbers for Ben Hughes, five plus innings, four hits, two runs. They were both earned, two strikeouts and two walks. Those are the final numbers for Ben Hughes, who came in in relief of Don Erdahl, who started this game, went just an inning plus. Here's the 3-2, and a swing and a miss, and a strikeout for Volker. That'll be the second victim, or the third victim, excuse me, here of the third inning. And that will send us to the eighth, an air freight. Now six defensive outs away from a spot in tomorrow's semifinals as they lead Minnetonka 7-0 after seven. Nobody does high school sports like PrepSpotlight.tv. Your home for Minnesota State tournament action is also where you can find the best weekly action during the regular season in 2021. We make it easy to be a high school sports fan at PrepSpotlight.tv. The town ball tour head to the small towns and tell people what it's all about a lot of excitement the weather is fantastic this place has been here since the early 80s this is a baseball town the town is here the kids are here it's safe it's a wonderful environment we certainly met some wonderful characters thanks for joining us for another season of fox 9's town ball tour
Blaine Rutledge will lead things off for Minnetonka here in the top half of the eighth inning. Rutledge was at the plate when, when uh, Ben Stoller was thrown out trying to advance to second. And first pitch missed for ball one. And the 1-0, here's Lobshire's second offering. It's down and away, 2-0. So two balls and no strikes. 2-0 pitch coming, down and away, ball three. Three zero, got to come back, and it's ball four. Wow! So two head scratchers there, the first and the fourth, and it's a four pitch walk to Blaine Rutledge to start the eighth. Number forty, Joe Avalera. First pitch from Lobshears over for a strike. Here's the 0-1, and a breaking ball for strike two. No balls, two strikes. And a swing and a miss on a pitch down. Strikeout number eight for Loebshire. Left fielder now. Number 28, Mike Davis. So Davis will bat with a runner on first and one out. Lobshear has set Davis down twice and walked him once. He's 0 for 2. First pitch over for strike one. No balls and a strike. Rutledge, the runner at first. Here's the 0-1, and there's a ground ball pulled wide of third. 0-2. The Metro Knights in baseball 365 will play... Our second game today, followed by Highland Park and St. Anthony. Here's the 0-2, and that is low, ball one. And then Stockman's Irish will play the St. Paul Capitals in our night game this evening. I'll be with you from Palm Field for all four of them. Up and in, ball two. So two balls, two strikes. Davis has reached on two errors today. Second one was, eh, could have gone either way. Here's the 2-2. And he fights that one off to stay alive. Count will stay at two balls, two strikes. Two two from Lobshear. Swing and a miss. And Davis is gone for out number two. Ninth strikeout for Lobshear. And that'll bring up Schallenberger. And first pitch, strike one. So Lobshear gets ahead of Schallenberger 0-1. And a tapper back to the screen. Nothing in two. Just barely able to get a piece of that one. No balls, two strikes. Looks at Rutledge at first. Here's the 0-2, and this is popped up but out of play. Not far enough for the wind to help push it back. No balls and two strikes. Our second game, again, is slated for a 1 o'clock start time. Game two, or game three is 4 o'clock, and then game four is slated for 7. Here's the 0-2, and that's in the dirt. Nice backhand by Pierce. 1 and 2. And the one-two pitch into the gap in right center field. Long run for Kohler, but giving way to the center fielder, Scallon, and he'll make the catch to end the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. 
And Air Freight now just three defensive outs away from a Dayton tomorrow semifinals. Celebrate the end of the 2021 town ball season. Join your teammates, rivals, and ball fans from around the state at the Twins game on September 11th. Special ticket pricing for town ball players and fans. Salutes to the newly crowned champs and a very fun night at the ballpark. Order your tickets at twinsbaseball.com slash townball and wear your town's team colors to Target Field on September 11th. Bottom half of the eighth inning. Air Freight leading 7 0. It'll be Pierce, Cummings, and Halverson to face, to face Paul Volker. Pierce one for four, singled in the second. Had an RBI single in the second. And here's the first pitch from Volker upstairs and away, ball one. The 1-0 pitch and foul back, 1-1. One one. One one. Walker sets and deals the 1-1. One one. Swung on and missed, 1-2. Pierce flew out to right field the first inning. RBI single in the second. Popped out to second in the fourth and then reached on a fielder's choice in the sixth. Here's the one, two. And that's flip foul. One and two again. Again, the winner of this game, which we're down to a seven nothing lead with three outs to go. It looks like Air Freight is in position anyway to move on. They will play tomorrow at noon. A one two pitch, swung on and missed, and a strikeout for Volker, his second. And there's out number one. Quick one away, number 46, Tommy Cummings. So Cummings will bat now. Cummings has four hits and four trips. He's a perfect four for four. First time facing Volker, and just missed that one and flipped it back to the screen. Didn't miss that one by much. 0 and 1. Volker sets and the 0 1 high. Takes Stoller out of his crouch to go get it. 1 and 1. One ball, one strike. And a ground ball back up the middle. And there's hit number five. Five for five for Cummings. And they just can't figure out a way to get him out. Third baseman, number 15, Kyle Halverson. Kyle Halverson is 0 for 4, looking for his first hit of the day. Reached on an air, a couple of line outs and a ground out. Hit the ball hard a couple of times. And that... Must have missed high. Want to know? Walker sets. Here's the 1 0. And that's popped up, foul, and out of play. And wind pushed it back a little bit, but still stayed out of play. Seven runs, 14 hits, two errors for Air Freight. No runs, four hits, three errors. 
for Minnetonka. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Man, there's a strike one and two. One ball and two strikes. One and two. And Volker pumps a fastball over for strike three. Third strikeout for Volker today in his brief relief appearance. He struck out three of the five outs that he has recorded. And now Tom Kohler will hit. He's three for four. And Kohler stepped out, and that one looked like it was inside, but it's taken for a strike. Nothing at one. A one pitch, swing and a miss, nothing in two. No balls, two strikes. Kohler three for four. And swing and a miss. Strikeout number three of the inning. And strikeout number five of the relief appearance for, for, for Paul Volker. We go to the ninth. It's the last chance for Minnetonka. They trail 7 nothing. Nobody does high school sports like PrepSpotlight.tv. Your home for Minnesota State tournament action is also where you can find the best weekly action during the regular season in 2021. We make it easy to be a high school sports fan at PrepSpotlight.tv. First baseman, number 47, Jack Hansen. To the ninth inning, and it is seven nothing air freight. Minnetonka will send Hansen, Volker, and Timpson to face Graham Lobshear, who has allowed just four hits through eight innings, and a check swing. They'll appeal that to first, but no swing, nothing in one. Or one and all, oh, excuse me. And second pitch is ripped to left field and gone. A home run. I looked down for a second and all of a sudden that one's leaving the yard. So Hanson homers. And that's the first run of the day for Minnetonka here in the ninth. But it may just be too little too late as they trail now 7-1. to one. So Paul Volker, who has come on in relief on the mound and pitched fairly well through two innings, takes the first pitch for a strike. Here's the 0-1, nothing in two now as he swings through a fastball, 0-2. So two pitch, line to the left side and just foul. Here's the 0-2 from Lobshear and a curveball tapped up the first baseline, but foul. No balls, two strikes. Volker 0 for 3, a strikeout, a line out, and a ground out. He hit that line drive into center back in the fourth inning that would have 
gotten Minnetonka their first runs, but it just hung up in the air. Here's a two hopper to short. Charging in is Co Cook, and he throws out Volker for the opening out of the ninth. And that's out number one. Right fielder now, number 27, Nick Timpson. So Timpson will hit. And a breaking ball outside for ball one. Here's the 1 0, and that's inside, 2 0. Now, that is popped up and out of play. Now, since Kyle Hoffman is in the on-deck circle, I'm assuming you can DH for anybody that doesn't have to just be the pitcher. Here's the 2-1. All the, ooh, that just missed off the plate, 3-1. All these different leagues and different levels play by different rules for the DH, so it's kind of hard to keep them Keep straight, I know some of the Legion leagues have gone to pitcher only, the AL rule. That's high, ball four. Third walk issued by Lobshear today. But the fact that Hoffman is in the batter's box right now means that the change of the order or the change of the lineup was Anderson for, oh, there's a line drive, smoke to left field. That's going to be down for a hit. So a one-out single, runners on first and second. So Anderson took over for Hughes, technically, in the lineup. So the DH stayed. I assumed, because both teams were hitting for their pitcher, that maybe in amateur baseball that was the only option. Because if that were the case, for the Millers, number 33, Steve 33 Steve Schmitz will hit. Because if you could only DH for the pitcher, that would mean then that Anderson would have to hit in that spot that Hoffman just did. So first and second, one out. And lefty on lefty here as Schmitz digs in to hit for the catcher, Stoller. And he swings through an off-speed pitch, nothing in one. Stoller had been 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts against Lobshear to this point. Here's the 0-1, and it's high. One ball, one strike. One one. And a tapper to the right side. Schaefer to second for one. Relay to first and a game ending double play. Four six three. And it is Air Freight heading on to the semifinals with a 7-1 victory over the Minnetonka Millers today. Let's go through the final numbers for you. I'll take a, just a quick break, and we'll be back with the final numbers after this. All summer long, you have gathered with friends, neighbors, and family at ball yards all across Minnesota. Still going, still going, gone, a home run. Diamonds that decorate and help define hundreds of communities. Town Ball binds together our passion for baseball in our hometowns. And on September 11th, the cornerstone of Minnesota baseball, Target Field, will host a party for all those who play, watch, and support Town Ball. The Twins host the Royals at 6.10 p.m. Prior to the game, the newly crowned state amateur champs will be honored at the Town Ball Tavern and during a pregame ceremony. Wear your team colors and enjoy a special night at Target Field. The 0-2 pitch, strike three, Fairmont, state champions in 2020.
For tickets to the Twins' tip of the cap to Town Ball on September 11th, visit twinsbaseball.com slash townball. Let's go through the final numbers here for you quickly. For the Minnetonka Millers, one run on six hits. There were two errors charged to air freight. Eight men left on base for Minnetonka. For air freight, they finished with seven runs on 14 hits. There were three errors charged to Minnetonka. And there were 11 base runners left aboard. The winning pitcher today, Graham Lobshear, he goes nine innings, six hits, one earned run. He struck out eight and walk three. The loss gets charged to Don Erdahl. One inning, five hits, five runs. They were two were earned, no strikeouts, and one walk. The game was played in two hours and 21 minutes. So that'll set us up for game number two of the day. Baseball 360 will take on the Metro Knights, and the winners, or the winner of that game will move on to play at noon tomorrow against Air Freight Unlimited right back here at Palm Field, and of course, all the games from the Class A Amateur Tournament can be seen right here on PrepSpotlight.tv. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back in about 45 minutes with game number two, Baseball 360, and the Metro Knights coming up. But our final score one more time from Palm Field in St. Anthony was Air Freight 7, Minnetonka 1. And we'll see you back here in just a little bit for game number two.